Yeah, I know. I'm obviously not employed anymore. It's just like the only thing I can think about now is my kids, man. My kids. Daddy's boys. In 2016, Officer Matthew Boynton was fired from the Griffin, Georgia Police Department. You might think it's because his wife was shot with his service weapon. And congratulations, you would be dead wrong. Boynton was instead fired and arrested for filing a false statement to the police as well as violating his oath of office. How does a police officer go to jail for lying? It all started when he allegedly stole a gym bag with his wife and children's clothes to attempt to stop her from leaving, which shouldn't have been an issue in the first place, seeing as the now ex-wife attempted suicide, according to the doctors treating her injuries while she was in a coma, the night he allegedly stole the bag. While the story received international attention when it first broke, that is not our focus for today. What we are looking to accomplish is to study the interrogation when Matthew got confronted by his own department for stealing his ex-wife's belongings. Right from the beginning, you can see the interrogation room is designed to have the officer backed into a corner. This triggers the fight or flight response and makes people more willing to tell whatever the interrogator wants to get out. You can also see the room bare and the interrogators blocking the path of the exit. All right, Matthew, I'm just going to start off by letting you know that, that I am not conducting an, an internal investigation on you. Okay? okay. So Gary is not implied. You can see them start the investigation by trying to put the person at ease, by telling Boynton that he is not going to be subject to an internal investigation. With this particular subject, this information is given freely and early for what we believe are two main reasons. The first reason is that they are co-workers, and the male investigator is wanting to extend professional courtesy to his fellow officer. The second reason is to try and relax and build rapport with Officer Boynton. We find this to be a potentially very useful tool in an interrogator's tool belt, especially with police officers. What's that in reference to? It's in reference to, you remember the um, statement you wrote me? About Jessica saying you took items from the house. Yeah, the computer. Yeah. That's what's going to be a reference to. Okay. So Jessica came in. She filed a report. Um, okay. I talked to you about it. Uh, you wrote a statement saying you didn't have any of her items. Um, right. The report specifically said her retainer and stuff like that and clothes. Okay. Um, do you know anything about where her clothes or retainer might have been? Like I told her before, the only thing that we might have had would have been in that white trailer. And my stepdad has not mentioned anything else being in there. And we gave everything back that we had because she had put some stuff in like a uh, it's like a little foot chase thing. Mm -hmm. We opened up, it's got two little boxes. I think we used to use it for like diapers and stuff now, but I mean, everything that she had that I knew of was gone. I got rid of everything I knew of. So, do you recognize that bag? One of the detectives shows Officer Boynton a photo of his ex wife's gym bag that has been missing, though the context isn't there is the video yet. This the bag she accused him of taking and that he wrote in a sworn statement he did not have. Yes, yeah, the bag that Jessica let me use to put all my gym stuff in when we used to be together. Okay, so when's the last time you saw that bag? I mean, it's been a while. I don't, I don't know an exact date, I don't know. Um, I think my stepdad, he, he had it in the, I think the white trailer, and that, that's been a while. And he brought it, but I haven't been through it or anything. Um, he put it in my storage, put it in my storage thing in my house, which is like when you pull in the driveway. Mm -hmm. It's a little storage thing on the right. You open the door and it's got all my stuff in there. I had to clean that, some of it out recently. That was tossed in there, but I mean, it's in there with a bunch of my stuff, like a brown tub I used to keep in my old patrol car with gym mm -hmm. stuff in it and work stuff. Would so, that be the utility room, my carport room? At your new house? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I keep, like, or I, well, I keep stuff in that, and I keep stuff in, like, what's considered an office and left the back of my house. Mm hmm so, I just toss it over the rest of my job. <clears throat> but it's just old gym bag. The second detective leans forward to show Matthew the photos of his ex-wife's belongings in detail. The detective then goes on to talk about how and where the gym bag was found. 
We don't want to give spoilers as to what this ultimately means for Officer Boynton, but it's probably not good. You can tell it's not good by the way the officers seem uncomfortable in his own skin and in the shakiness of his voice. We see the interrogator walking the guy down and getting the officer to admit step by step how the officer had the woman's items in his possession. You can see the confidence leave Officer Boynton's body as the gravity of the situation settles on him. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Known you a long time. Yes, sir. This bag, you saw it moving when you moved from your apartment to the main road. I didn't know. And 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 your stepdad and Wendell, Wendell saw it, and another female saw it. All right. Okay. At the house and the apartments, yes or no. When you um, moved from the park. When I when I moved, like I said, I had all my stuff in the white trailer. Man, and that's, that's, not, that's not what I'm asking you. When y'all were in the process of moving, and you moved into the house that you're at now, your residence, did you or did you not see this bag? Yes, sir. It was in my storage room in the, in the garage. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, why would I be holding a picture of this bag? I guess because Jessica wrote it into you. Why would Jessica have it if you had it at your house? Um, I don't know. I guess somebody got it from my garage or <clears throat> my shed. Who would have got it? Um, there's a couple of people. Okay. I don't know. All right. Exactly who. Okay. And bag. inside that bag, there were numerous contents inside of it. And one of those is this right here. You know what this is? It's like Jessica's old retainer thing. Mm -hmm. She had them wear together. Right. The bag was completely filled with female clothes. And this is one photo of it. That's not yours. No. It's not. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's not yours. No, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. Who did that belong to? This guy with Jessica's name wants to be Jessica's retainer thing. <sighs> If it was in that, if it was in this right here, where would that have been at? Uh, I had all of her stuff in it. My, what would it have been at? It would have been in my the garage thing, like I said. In. Which is where? Which is at my house. Which is at your house. Yes, sir. Did you buy that for Jessica? I don't recall. I don't think I did. Because she had. I think her grandparents did. Because she had retainers before she met you, right? Before y'all got married, right? I believe so. So that would make it whose property? Uh, hers. Not yours, right? Right. Yes, sir. Whose bag is that? Uh, Jessica's. And the contents in the bag? It's got all her stuff in it. So why would you not have brought that to us when you noticed, when you saw the bag at moving? Sarge, I promise I've not been through that bag. The last time I used Matthew, that bag I didn't, was for I didn't, I didn't ask you that, Matthew. Listen to me, buddy. Who's bag is this? I understand what you're saying. It's just because I should have brought it up here. You know, Next all time. things, and I don't know anything about your other issue, but all the things involved in reference to this case, all the going around, the statement that you wrote, It says Matthew Boynton, January the 9th, 2017. I was advised to complete the statement on a previous date by Lieutenant Yancey. Jessica Lester Dash Boynton's property was already previously returned to her by my stepdad, Charles McDaniel Jr. Shortly after Jessica got out of this hospital, uh, the dining room table, along with other items, were picked up by Kathy Zellner for Jessica. The remaining items such as Hope Chess clothing and other miscellaneous items returned to Jessica. I did not have any other items of Jessica's. This is Matthew Boynton. Is that your statement? Yes, sir. Who's that, Matthew? That's Jessica's bag. Jessica's retainer. You understand you didn't buy that? I understand. That does not make it community property? I understand. 
That makes it her property. Yes, sir. That you're in possession of. Yes, sir. The bag was turned into us. We have possession of the bag. Yes, sir. We have evidence <coughs> that says it came out of your storage room. Is that true? Yes, sir. Boynton admits to having the missing bag in his storage room, further implicating himself in not only a potential theft charge, but also lying on a sworn statement. Once all the cards are laid out on the table, and Officer Boynton has given a confession that is to detective satisfaction, both the male and female detective leave the room, with nobody to accompany the young officer except his thoughts. We see Boynton picking at his hand, this is showing signs of nervousness, even though, in this instance, it's not necessary. Interrogation specialists will often use this information to gauge how well their interrogation is going. They will look at the video feed with the suspect in the room by themselves and see the reaction. The more nervous or physically distraught they appear when the suspects think they're alone, the closer the interrogator is to getting the information to make an arrest. Boynton start to take off his police equipment, followed by his vest. This is because he has a good guess he is not leaving that room unless it's in cuffs. I'm sorry, man. I got a smoke cigarette. You're good. Man, dude, man, why? I, I'm walking around outside. Why would you say you didn't have the damn bag when you had it? You know you can't give a sworn statement and lie on it. Oh, that's harsh. Why would you do that, Matthew? Oh, that. It was a bag, man. It wasn't. It's not like it was. <laughs> Talk to me, man. I mean, help me understand. I'm sorry, I swear. I know it's, that was hard to believe, but I didn't think about that bag. Otherwise, I wouldn't have wrote. I wouldn't have wrote. I said, hold on, little T. I got something. Let me go get it. I swear, I wouldn't have done that because I've got two kids, three and one. I wouldn't jeopardize that over a bag. If, I'm telling you, sorry. If I would have thought about it then, I would have said something. But you knew you had the bag. Uh, Did you not know you had the bag? I'm sorry, I, my mind's right. I don't, I fucked up. I know I didn't. I should have turned it in. But not only because I'm a cop, because I should have, because it was just, because even if she let me use it, it was hurts. the right thing to do, man. I'm clear. Yes, sir. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have messed up and been in this position because of my kids. But why didn't you turn the bag in when you damn moved? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, I was, too, I don't know what I was thinking then. Did you think you was going to get in trouble if you turned it in late? I, I guess. I don't know what I was going through. Never mind. Boynton continues to talk and try and make justifications for his actions and attempts to appeal to the investigator. This does not work 100% of the time, statistically speaking. What do you think should happen now? No, that's probably going to happen. No, that's not what I asked you. So what do you think should happen? I just... What is <laughs> Kids are fucking daddy's boys, man. <laughs> if I would have thought about it, I would have done it. Of all, of all the stuff that you, you see about you, you know if you were in possession of something that belonged to her, you know you should have, you could have brought it to me. You know I'm going to do the right thing, you know I have to do the right thing. I would have took care of it, I would have gotten the bag back to her. But when you knew you had the bag and you didn't do anything about it, man, you put me in a situation where I, got, I don't have any other choice. I'm clear. I'm clear. There's no excuse for it. Here. I know it's got that on there. I know. Uh, it's, it's so hard. Like, well, I, I love working here. I know you and do. I, and I, I, was, I asked you, I, mean, I was so scared to come to work every day. Why? Because every time I did. 
you know, it was always uh, 1179 or 1022 to 42 come up here. And it's always something. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I thought if I brought it up here, I was going to get fired and whatever. Man, I don't know. I'm so young and stupid. But Matthew, you know doing the right thing regardless. It doesn't matter. If you do the right thing, you can live with yourself. Officer Boynton was charged with two felonies, filing a false statement and violating his oath of office. A grand jury would return a no bill. This means that Officer Boynton, while unemployed, still would be able to continue to live as a free man. Many people wonder how the young officer wasn't indicted, especially considering there is a confession to at least one of the charges on video camera. This fact has led some to come to the conclusion that the Griffin Police Department will hide behind the blue wall of silence in order to keep somebody that they served with out of prison. And while Matthew Boynton may have escaped having to face down the justice system by the skin of his teeth, it's important to remember the average person like you and I will probably not be so lucky. While we are not lawyers and therefore are not giving legal advice, we will repeat a phrase often parroted by many, many defense attorneys. When in doubt, shut your mouth.